Greenwood was an African-American neighborhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so prosperous that it became known as the region's Black Wall Street. That is until this day, 100 years ago, when a white mob methodically wiped it off the map. Its echoes loom large in the history not only of Tulsa, but also in the history of the United States. St. Thomas history professor Dr. Yuhuru Williams says as the nation marks the Tulsa massacre, also known as the Tulsa race riot of 1921, it's important to understand what it was and what it wasn't. When people tell the story of, of Tulsa, they begin with Dick Rowland, who was a young man who um, was accused falsely of attacking a young white girl in the elevator, Sarah Page. But the accusations didn't even come from Page herself. It was a newspaper article about the incident that incited a lynch mob. And when the white crowd confronted a group of black World War I veterans who had tried to protect the innocent Roland, a struggle over a gun led to a single gunshot that mobilized not only a mob, but a coordinated attack involving guns, arson, and bombings that lasted days. Even today, it's mind-boggling um, to imagine that that level of destruction and violence went on for three days, that you had, you know, um, African-American families separated, um, family members killed, um, literally in front of their children, in the eyes of their grandchildren. In the end, nearly 35 square blocks were destroyed and 10,000 people left homeless. An estimated 300 people died, an inexact figure because a full accounting of mass graves continues today, as does the wait for accountability. No one wore a mask in Tulsa. We're not talking about Ku Klux Klan violence. We're not talking about um, night Riders or those who disguised their identities. The perpetrators of that act were well known to authorities. No one was ever arrested or held accountable for what happened in that space. And that wasn't limited to Tulsa. Dr. Williams says smaller race riots, including the 1920 lynching of three black men in Duluth, took place all across the country during that time period. And he says further destruction of black neighborhoods followed in the decades after. The second wave of the dismantling of Black Wall Street took place in the 1970s with urban renewal, when they actually ran the interstate through the remnants of that community very reminiscent of what happened here in the Rondo community, where it's not just the violence, but then the policies, practices, and procedures that are put through by the government that ultimately end up accomplishing the work of destroying this thriving Black community and eviscerating the foundations for that community ever to be able to resuscitate itself. Which is why, years later, amid another reckoning on race, Dr. Williams says we need to think about how we can work to make these communities whole again beginning by acknowledging the holes we left behind. I would hope that people would recognize that there was a lot of history, hard history, that we have to confront in order to really talk about healing and reconciliation in the United States. But you really can't get to healing unless you experience the hurt. Today, President Joe Biden issued a proclamation to remember the 1921 massacre, calling on Americans to eradicate systemic racism and help rebuild these communities and lives that have been destroyed by it. He also pledged federal dollars and federal support to make it happen. Tomorrow, President Biden will be headed to Tulsa.